Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me as I take my journey through the world of pens. And I try to, you know, experiment, explore, not just stick with the same thing all the time. And I explore all different means of purchasing. Mass drop, which has turned into something else. And Kickstarter. So this is from Kickstarter. It's from Australia. So that should give a clue to many of you out there. And Wasky Squirrel did a first impressions on the pen he received. So this is the pen that was sent to me. The um, cost on Kickstarter included shipping. As you can see down here, it's signed by the shipper, Joshua Leafen, or Josh, or JPL, as he may be known. And this also had, you know, Priority Mail Express, etc. I signed for it. Here we have the contents of the box, as described by Josh in his Kickstarter write-up. Here's some of that write-up. By the, you know, the thing that, to me that Kickstarter is somewhat frustrating is you talk about how long it takes to get a pen. And I paid for the pen in June and received it in January. So that's a long time. There's all, another year. I contributed to the Kickstarter because I really... Um, admired what Josh was trying to do, handmade pens. He has his own uh, interesting perspective on pens. He's done a lot of reviews. So when I saw him take this leap, I decided to leap along with him. So in my package, I got everything. This is that pen pouch, which is, eh. I got my five cartridges, I got a polishing cloth. Here's the pen with its nice pen rest. I got this wooden tube, which the pen is not in right now, and we'll explain why later. So this explains, it's the classic, it's color carbon, material ebonite, there's a date of December 11th, and QC by JPL, and, and made in Australia. When you get involved in these types of things, I think you need to have realistic expectations. So the camera is now set up for looking at a single pen. So I'm a big first impressions type of person. So when I first uh, extracted this pen from its wooden tube, I was not overly impressed. For some reason, I thought that I had ordered a matte black finish and not a glossy black. I don't even know whether that was an option. Uh, when I read more about the details of the pen, uh, Josh did say it was going to be lacquered. I did not expect this type of lacquering. You know, the surface is not exactly smooth or regular. Maybe that's part of the lacquering that has gone into uh, that look. And also, I love the feel of ebonite. And to me, once you lacquer it, it doesn't feel like ebonite anymore. It feels like a painted pen. It's not a, like a Yurushi lacquer. I don't know how many layers he used or what he did in between the layers. But it just, you know... To me, it's not representative of a pen that I would have expected, the quality that I would have expected from the price that I paid. But as a handmade pen, by the first pen made by a fellow YouTube reviewer, I guess it's in that ballpark. And, and I have to step back and tell myself to be realistic about this. So as we take a look at the pen, we'll unscrew the cap. 
And uh, it's hard to count here, but I would say pff, almost three turns, somewhere in that vein. Uh, we look at this section, which is an interesting section. I'm certain Josh decided that's what he was comfortable with. And that is just ebonite without any lacquer on it. And really not, not highly polished, which is fine for a section. Like Wasky Squirrel, I got the double broad uh, Bach nib and two-tone. That's what I was looking for. These threads are a little bit rough. So when you uncap, you can feel it. There's a fair amount of friction there. And the other thing that I noticed was is that the lacquer is starting to chip off the bottom of the cap here. And it is fairly irregular there. And it's also at the bottom of the barrel. And it looks like some excess lacquer may have spilled over. Maybe didn't dry before it was initially capped. Or sometimes lacquer could take weeks to cure fully. And maybe it was put together and shipped out before it cured all the way. And I don't understand the white color here. This should be black ebonite. You can see a little bit inside that cap. It is black. So what I'm probably going to do is sand this down and take it down to raw ebonite and just get rid of that lacquer and whatever that white stuff is, which might have been what he may have used after the polishing, but I just it's hard for me to understand. It's a cartridge converter, and the section unscrews. And again, those threads are quite tight. And the more you unscrew, the looser they become. So maybe uh, he... When he machined these threads, he made a little bit of a change down towards the end. You can see a little bit of discoloration there. And, you know, it it's, it's really doesn't look like a full black. It looks like more of a brown black or a brown, a dark brown color. Uh, just a standard uh, Bach converter here, uh, Schmidt converter, whatever it is. It just pulls off. You know, it doesn't have that insert that I like to see in a converter so when you're putting it on and off a lot it'll stay in place but there's a nice deep well here so it's it's very secure it's not going to come off or go anywhere standard Bach feed so that's the pen and one of the things that put this pen in perspective is I got my Kiwi pens ebonite pen at the same day this one arrived and I have to say that that pen uh, certainly impressed me and this pen uh, did not. So we're going to ink it up. I'm not going to flush it or do anything I would normally do because Josh was very clear that he made this pen ready to write upon receipt. I'm not going to clean up anything here because let's see how it writes and let's see how I feel about that part of it before I invest more time in uh, ad addressing some of the deficiencies in the way the pen was made. Here's my uh, pens I'm going to compare the Artisan Classic to. The first one here is an Edison Pearl, another ebonite pen with a ripple pattern in it. But this one made by Edison certainly has a much different quality feel to it than the Artisan Classic. And here's the Kiwi Pens ebonite pen, which I recently reviewed and fell in love with. And again, it's just a different look. It's a more glossy than the Edison one, which I think really is an excellent finish, but then it's Edison. And for size comparison, here's a Pilot Metropolitan. Uncapped, you will see a lot of more differences between these pens. I was uh, not a fan of the way Edison did the section with this huge step up. This is a minimalistic design, so the outside diameter, the cap and barrel are the same. This is a nice long section, which I think is good from a writing perspective. And the hourglass section like this with the concave shape kind of forces your fingers into one place. I really enjoy the Kiwi pens in all aspects, and that section is very nice and useful. And again, just for comparison, is the Pilot Metropolitan Say No More. As we zoom in, we'll, we'll see another difference. So these are different threads here. Um, since I got the pen and been using it, I put some silicone grease on the threads here and also the threads on the section. And now they're a lot smoother. 
and it doesn't feel like it's grating on itself, <laughs> which is not a good feel. Obviously, the beautiful clean threads here, and the Kiwi Pen also has great threading. These are both finer threads than Josh used on this Ebonite pen that he made. Number six nibs in these three pens, and of course the Metropolitan has its Pilot Unique number five size nib. So what ink to put in Josh's pen? Now, as you know, I got a bunch of pen BBS inks. So this is number 312. Comes in a smaller bottle than uh, the other inks do from Pen BBS. Still a very nice bottle. Not much here to identify it. Some of these smaller bottles do have the number of the ink on it, but this one does not. And Google Translate won't translate these uh, Chinese characters. I guess they're too artistically done. But it is a glitter ink. And it does have, it looks like a gold type of glitter in it. So it'll be interesting to see how it might work. I expect that nib to be kind of wet and lay down a nice broad line. Here's the color card. And I see it as kind of like in the sepia family, but with a little green in it. Certainly a very interesting color. And here's the chromatography, which doesn't disappoint. You can see a little bit of green there, something dark on the top here, and there's a little bit of that glitter remaining here at the bottom. Just got to catch the light on it right. So I'm being interesting and intrigued to see how this works in the double broad nib. So the pen has been inked up with the Pen BBS ink. I've written it with it for a while, and I've gotten a good feel for the pen and how the nib works. And I've decided this review really should be in three parts. Obviously, the primary part is the pen, the Artisan Classic Ebonite pen that I received. The second part of the review is on the Bach double broad nib, which is the first double broad nib I have. And the third one is on the ink. So one of the things that I've been working on been working on these nibs. So here we go with the double broad Bach. And there's the 0 0.7, which I'm calling a medium. There's a Knox broad nib. Here are two number six nibs from Bobby, which he called a 1.2 and a 1.5. The Bach double broad kind of fits in between there, like a 1.35. It's a pen BBS medium, which I'm calling again a 0 0.7. Here's two number five nibs, which is also 1.2 and 1.5 that were Bobby's. And he sold those with the intention of grinding them. And, and Josh has ground one of them, and I wrote with them, and it was phenomenal. And just to put things in perspective, there's a difference between that double broad and the fine nib, the standard fine nib, that's on Pen BBS. As you can see, here's a great variety of nibs, and this is just one of them, and it fits into this category. So we're ready for writing, but obviously we need to do a few more things before then. So I put a piece of tape there so we can count the turns to get the cap off. One, two, three, three and a quarter turns. So that is more turns than I think is necessary. And I think one of the reasons is this is a single threaded here for the cap to attach to the barrel versus multi-threaded. So there's only one engagement point. So you need to go through all these threads in order to secure the cap. And anything over two turns I consider to be something that I notice. And this is three and a quarter. The pen fits fine in the hand. It's quite long. That section is actually okay. I had my doubts about whether it would work, but it's the diameter is enough for me to comfortably hold it with my fingers. And I like that straight section. You can move up and down. The threads you really don't feel because they're block threads. And even though there's that step up, it's not sharp and it doesn't intrude. And I can't imagine holding it that high because 
it's a big nib and you're a long way away from the paper. We talked about posting and I said this is a pen that I wouldn't post, but just for those that are interested, it only posts down a very, very small amount and doesn't stay. And I'm not going to try to force it on because that's not something I want to do. I think it's time for ink on paper. There's my microphone here on a foam pad to catch the sounds of the nib. So as expected, this nib is super smooth. And what's not expected, it's a little soft. It has a bounce. Um, I like it. Light pressure, horizontal strokes as your line, downward little pressure, a little more pressure. I mean, that thing works nice. I'm impressed. So I would definitely look for more double broad Bach nibs. So if I was going to rate this nib, I'd give it a 9.5. It's wet, as you can see up here. And that is a very interesting color of ink. Uh, it's smooth, it's consistent, it does require pressure, but not an exorbitant amount. And you can see with light pressure it does lay down some ink, but it's, it's just a fine line, which is quite interesting for a double broad nib. And again, if you don't keep the nib on the paper, it won't write. So like I said, I was going to rate the nib separately. But we've now come down to rate the pen. And this is a very difficult thing because putting the pen in perspective, I need to be as objective as possible. So I'm going to give it an 8.2. Um, the only check I can really give it is, is a check for ergonomics. I like that section. It's a little bit different, but it works well. I can't give it a check for the nib because I did the nib separately. Um, design is just the design. I mean, there's nothing spectacular about the design. The fit and finish is marginal, especially the finish. Um, and it's not a value. There's none available, obviously, because the quick starter uh, sold out and is done. Uh, Josh may start another one, and he is selling on Etsy. Here's a pen he's selling on Etsy, which is in a, is resin, acrylic resin, and, and not ebonite. So he's saving money on materials. He said he used Japanese ebonite, so it may have been expensive for the ebonite blocks that he used, or rods, or however he uh, acquired them. Going to try to catch some of that sheen in this ink because it is to me amazing. Similar to the White House Burning Ink from Pen BBS, I'm impressed with their uh, glitter inks. I did have experience with one, the 277 Forgive Orange, and I really did like that one a lot too. And now I have many more. Hopefully, that sheen is coming through. So, why do I have this pen? I discussed a little bit in the beginning as I enjoy exploring everything about pens and this is definitely one aspect of pen making. I certainly have no desire, interest, and no skill to design and make my own pen. So I have a lot of respect and admiration for those that do, but I must be honest in my critique of their product. If this pen was $70, I would say that's the top end from my perspective. 
uh, maybe the nib bumps it up to 80, but then you could have ordered an extra finer fine and not a double broad. Double broad is definitely not a typical nib that you're going to find on many pens as an option. And I haven't actually seen the, the nib for sale that much either, and I haven't really looked, but now I will. So am I happy I have this pen? Absolutely. I'm a, a firm believer in trying to see things for what they are, appreciating them for what they are. Um, and this is certainly a unique pen. There's not going to be another one like it. Um, if, when Josh becomes famous, rock star, movie star, or whatever, hey, maybe this may have an extreme collectible value as one of his first creations. Who knows? I think he did some 3D printing, but I wasn't aware of whether he sold any of those or just talked about them. So I've gone on as much as I can on this pen. So thank you for watching. You notice after a few minutes of talking, it started right up. I also put a decent amount of pressure on it. May you find a pen that you fall in love with, and it doesn't matter what it costs. If it's money that you are comfortable with spending, at the end of the day, if you feel that you've exchanged your money for something that you feel brings you joy and pleasure, then that's good. Um, and hopefully you can find that great combination that, that works for you. So we've reached the end of this video. And we're going to say bye until the next video. And I'm glad I was able to share another pen and ink and nib combo that is really nice. And like I said, this nib requires some attention to consistently write. But when you do it, it's very rewarding.